Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's journey through Torah. This week is Parsha and more. It's an interesting portion. It's, I mean, a, there's so much in here that we can cover. This is this goes through uh, being a holy people. This goes through all of the Moadim, all the appointed times. There's so many things we can get in here. So it's kind of hard to pick which area to go. So uh, just kind of praying out which direction to go on this. And I kind of felt that we need to kind of make a stop at uh, something relating to coat. Now I know at the time that we're going through these cycles, we're in the midst of counting the 50 days to Shavuot, right? But I feel this is still relevant for what we're looking at and uh, the life of Yeshua. We know all the Moedim are prophetic. They're all shadows, foreshadows of him. They're all prophecies about the role of, of the Messiah and, and what Yahweh is doing to deliver his people and to bring them to himself. All of these things are very relevant, and we can really pick any one of them to talk about. But uh, I just felt for this time in this season, we need to take a look at this one first, okay? So let's go to Leviticus 23. And we're going to go to verses 37 to 39. It says, These are the Moedim of Adonai, which you are to proclaim to be holy convocations, to present an offering by fire to Adonai, a burnt offering, a grain offering, a sacrifice, and a drink offering, each on its own day. Besides those of the Shabbatoth of Adonai, and besides your gifts, all your vows, and all your freewill offerings which you give to Adonai. So on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruits of the land, you are to keep a feast to Adonai for seven days. First day is to be a Shabbat rest, and the eighth day will also be a Shabbat rest. So, uh, one of the things we need to look at here is this is the Feast of Ingathering, also called Sukkot. It's a seven-day festival with an eighth day added at the end. And and there's a, it's something interesting that happens here. Now, all the Moedim, they have some kind of relevance in relationship to uh, uh, produce, farming, you know, agricultural society, all of these things. But there's some prophetic things we can look at here in the gathering in the fruit of the land. Because it says when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, well, that's not really the wheat or the barley. Those are really different seasons that we're looking at there. So this is a different kind of moed. This is a different kind of fruit that we're talking about. And uh, and what's the word generally used for fruit? The word generally used for fruit is pre. Well, it's not the word used here. The word used here is tavua. Tavua, which is interesting in and of itself, but especially when we put it in this context. Tavua means income or produce, something that has increased, something that has revenue. And if we read it in the Hebrew, it reads, be'asvechem, Et tavuat ha'eretz, when you have gathered in the olive taf coming forth of the land. So this is something that we're, uh, it's really interesting here. We're talking about a prophetic ingathering, a gathering in of all the people, a gathering in of all the nations, and a gathering in of all the fruit that, is, that has been prepared to bring back into the land. Submit to you this, Yeshua said, the, the fields are ready for harvest, right? So go work in the fields. Well, we have to bring the uh, fruit of that labor in back in, right? And that's what we're talking about. This feast of ingathering is prophetic in the nature of Yahweh bringing all his people back home, bringing all of his people back into a place to have a relationship with him where they will dwell with him forever. This is relating also to what some may call a, a wedding feast, right? This is the time where we prepare to enter into eternity with Yahweh. He's gathering all of his people back in together, and we're preparing to dwell with him and to spend our time forever with him. Now, this word tavua, interesting, if you look at the theological word, word book of the Old Testament, has some interesting things to say about this word tavua as well, uh, starting with, it's the fourth most frequently used verb in, in, the, in the Tanakh. It's used over 2,570 times. For the most part, its everyday meanings are go, arrive, enter, or to die, like to go go be with the fathers. But Bo is also associated with a fulfillment of a promise. Okay, this is also used in proclaiming salvation that Israel is going to return and Israel is going to come back to the land. And this is what we see in many times, this word Bo, Tavua, that's used here. This word Bo is used in so many places about a, a prophetic returning of all the people of Yahweh back to the place of Israel, and uh, we see this, and they will come back, I will restore them to the land, I will pull them out of all the nations, and gather them in here, and uh, they will be my people, and I will be their God, right? These are the things that uh, we're looking at. In Micah 4, 6 through 8, says, In that day, declares Yahweh, I will assemble the lame and gather those who have been driven away and those whom I have afflicted, and the lame I will make the remnant and those who were cast off a strong nation, 
and Yahweh will reign over them in Mount Zion from this time forth and forevermore. And you, O tower of the flock, heal of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come. The former dominion shall come, kingship for the daughter of Yerushalayim. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting things that we're looking at here, right? We're talking about a restoration, Yahweh bringing all the people back in. In Isaiah 35, 10, it says, The ransomed of Yahweh will return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Again, we're talking about this gathering back in and returning people back home. Isaiah 51, 11 is, uh, And the ransomed of Yahweh will return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Uh, again, all of this is when we come to have a relationship with Yahweh, you know, we're looking at, well, someday we're all going to go be with him. Well, guess what, guys? There's This prophecy is all over the scripture where he says he will gather his people back in together, right? Zephaniah, Zephaniah uh, chapter 3, verse 20 says, at that time, I will bring you in at that time when I will gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the people of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says Yahweh. In Ezekiel eleven sixteen 16, and 17, it says, Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, Though I removed them far off among the nations, and though I scattered them among the countries, yet I have been a sanctuary to them for a while in the countries where they have gone. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the people, assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. In Ezekiel 34, 11 to 13, we read, for thus says the Lord God, behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in the inhabited places of the country. This is it. Yeshua, uh, when, when he was here, and, and he always had a heart for people when they were scattered all over the place. His desire was gathering in of the people of Yahweh together. Matter of fact, he came so that he could gather people from all over the world, all nations, all people. He came to gather all people into one people, a covenant people, right? Matthew 9, uh, 36 to 38 it says, when he saw the multitudes, he moved with compassion on them because they had fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Yeshua said that, that when the people were scattered all over the place, his heart broke because he wanted them to be gathered in together. And, and he said that, you know, he's a shepherd, he's the good shepherd. So he wanted the people to be gathered in together and to give them good things and to teach them good ways to live and, and to help provide and to do all of this for them. And that's what gathering in together with the people of Yahweh is going to do. When we're walking with Yahweh and walking in his ways, it's going to affect our life and the lives of those around us. And that's why Yeshua, when he saw everyone scattered and fighting and everything, he, he his heart broke. He wanted to see the people of Yahweh brought in together. Matthew 12, 30, he says that he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. Luke eleven twenty three, 23, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters. So again, the, the desire of Yahweh is that we be a people to gather in together and to help be in that harvest to bring in people from every nation, tribe, and tongue to uh, come into a place of covenant with the one true God. In Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 and 2, we see this. It says, It shall come to pass when all things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you will call them the mine among the nations. See this? And you will call them the mine among the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and you shall return to the Lord your God, and you obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. See this? When, when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, you're out, you're living in the nations, the people in the nations will come to see uh, Yahweh is the one true God. His word is true. He meant what he said, and they're going to turn to Yahweh, and they're going to listen to his voice. And he says there will be a blessing for them in that. Jeremiah 31, 8-10 says, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth, 
and with them that the blind and the lame, and the woman with child, and her that travails with child together, a great company shall return there, and they will come with weeping and with supplications, will I lead them, and I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, where they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O you nations, and declare it in the isles far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. See that? And that's what Yahweh promised. He said that though he scattered his people into all the depths of the earth, uh, all over, he says, I will gather all of them back home. Ezekiel 28, 25, and 26 says, Thus says the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and they shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, and they shall dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Yaakov, and they shall dwell safely therein, and they shall build houses and plant vineyards, and they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, and they shall know that I am Yahweh their God. This is what Yeshua came for, guys, so, so that we could have a people who we know we are in relationship with him, have a place of covenant, and learn to walk in his ways, right? Uh, Jeremiah 23, 1 through 5 says, Woe to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says Yahweh. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says Yahweh, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they will be fruitful and increase. Verse 4, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more or be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says Yahweh. For behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. He's talking about himself. He's talking about Yeshua. He's saying that uh, the, though the people were scattered all over the place because the shepherds that were supposed to be shepherding the people didn't, they brought more damage and harm to the people, so the people were scattered all over, Yahweh says, I'm going to send a good shepherd. I will be a good shepherd to them, and I will gather all my flock back in together. And guys, that's Yeshua. He is that good shepherd. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14 says, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hear you. And you shall seek me and find me when you will search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahweh, and I will bring you again into the place which I caused you to be carried away captive. Moving on to Jeremiah 32, verses 37 to 41. Behold, I will gather them out of the countries where I have gathered them in my anger, or, and, uh, and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever, for the good of them and for their children after them. Verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. Yeah, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. You know, there's only one thing in the entirety of the scripture that Yahweh says he will do with all his heart and soul, and that's this thing exactly, that he will bring back all of his people and plant them back in the land that he promised them. So going back to Deuteronomy uh, verses 31 through 10, look at verse 4. So if your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there, the Lord your God will gather you. So we're looking at where he will gather you, and there, from there he will take you. So when he says, I will gather you, in the Hebrew, it's kavatz ka Yahweh Elohecha. So this word kavatz is what we're looking at, okay? Kavatz, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because this word gathering in together, so we talked about tavua, the bringing in, the coming in, the gathering, the promise of restoration and bringing the people back. But kavatz is also a gathering of people back in. Again, back to the theological word book of the Old Testament, it says, so accomplishing such a clear prophecy, God exhibits his sovereignty and therefore sanctifies himself to those gathered in Ezekiel 20 verse 41. It says, as a pleasing aroma, I will accept you. 
when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will manifest my holiness among you in the sight of the nations. And the uh, same words used here in Genesis 49, 1, where it says, Jacob calls his sons together and he says, gather yourselves together that I may tell you what will befall you in the last days. So again, Asaf is, is Asfu, this is the gathering in together. Asaf is, is a gathering. So gather in together that I may tell you what will befall you in the last days. So this gathering in together is a prophecy of what's going to happen in the last days. All the people of Israel, all the people of Yahweh, all the people who are called by his name will be gathered in together as one. Again, this gather yourselves together, kavats, and here, sons of Jacob, hearken unto Israel your father. This word kavats is being used here again in gathering yourselves together. So he says, gather yourselves together, sons, you know, gather yourselves. I can tell you what will happen in the last days. And gather yourselves together, sons of Jacob, here to Israel your father. Yeah, asfu is being used there to gather yourselves together and then gather yourselves together, kavats. Both are being used here. Interesting. Because one is a gathering in together like you would gather in, uh, like gathering in seed, and another one is gathering in like you would gather in for a harvest. So again, we're talking about the process of sowing and reaping and a process of last days and end times and prophecy that's being fulfilled. Okay, back to Deuteronomy 30, verse 5. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it, and he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And Yahweh your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. And Yahweh your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the voice of Yahweh and keep all his commandments that I command you this day. Again, when we repent and we turn to Yahweh and he gathers us in together, he says, you will hear my voice. It doesn't just mean audibly hear his voice. It means we will be obedient to him. We will hear and we will obey. We listen and do, right? Yeshua didn't say anything different. John 10, 27, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. In John 15, 10, it says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. First John 5, 2 and 3, it says, by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Back to Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. It says, uh, the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your ground. For Yahweh will again take delight in prospering you as he took delight in your fathers when you obey the voice of Yahweh your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you turn to Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul. See that? We turn to him with all of our heart and all of our soul. Reminds me of uh, when Yeshua was asked, so what's the most important thing we got to do? And he was, he responded, the Shema, you know, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, here is the Lord your God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might, right? Which is quoting from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, by the way. So back to, again, this gathering all people together and, and this end times, uh, end times gathering in of all the people as prophesied from the Feast of Sukkot. Guys, Yeshua starts this gathering process, okay? Uh, that the Messiah will gather in all the nations. And this was also realized by Caiaphas. We read in John eleven forty seven to 52, it says, So the chief priests and the Pharisees, they gather, get, gather together in a council, and they said, What are we? For this man does many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all. Verse 50, Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this he spoke not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yeshua should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but also, look here, that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. See this? It was recognized that because of Yeshua's death, this would help be a part in gathering together all of the people, all of Israel that were in all of the nations. Then this would be part of bringing all the people who were exiled back home. And that's what Yeshua came to do. He came to gather all people, all tribes, all tongues, all nations back in to a place of covenant relationship. 
Jeremiah 50 verse 17 says, Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria has devoured him. And this last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Micah 2.12, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of you. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. And I will put them together as a sheep of Bozrah at the flock in the midst of their fold. And they will make a great noise by the reason of the multitude of men. Matthew 10.6 says, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15.24, Yeshua says, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is a part of gathering in the fruit. You know, we read all this. So after you've gathered in all the fruit of the land, then in Leviticus 23.40, you're instructed to take of these four species, the Arvimanim, the Lulav, the Etrog, the Myrtle. The, the, so you take of these four species. And you're to rejoice before the Lord your God. And all of that uh, together, it's it's just another symbol, just another example of how Yahweh wants us to worship. He, well, he wants us to worship with all that we are, with all that we have, but also uh, with, the, with the body of people. We cannot say, I'm, it's just me out here by myself. No, you are part of a people. You are part of a body. And uh, someday, all the body from all the scattered parts all over the world will be brought together and be whole again and be part of a, a people, one people, one shepherd, one king, right? So all together, all of these things with the four species to symbolize a whole man, the entire community, one body, all working together. And we will all be brought together into uh, into a place of relationship. And this, this is part of Yeshua bringing us back in together. Now, another place we see this prophetically speaking is the, the blessing in Deuteronomy 33 that Moshe gave to Yehuda, gave to Judah. And he says of Yehuda, he says, Hear Adonai the cry of Yehuda, bring him into his people and let his own hands defend him, but you help him against his enemies. Now, bring him into his people, it doesn't really make much sense, does it? But if you read it in the Hebrew, it, looks, it does make sense, because it reads, the El Amotivienu, literally the way it reads, is near or among his people, bring us. This happens in the Messiah. When we come to Yeshua, he brings us into a people of Israel, a people gathered in together. And what do we read uh, like in Romans? They, that the tribe of Judah, they have kept the integrity of the Torah being passed down from generation to generation to generation, right? And so all, all of us are going to come together to be part of one people. Near his people, bring us. Now we're looking at the whole idea of not just the dry bones being gathered in together, but the sticks being brought together to be one in the presence of Yahweh. Zechariah 8.23, it says, Thus says Yahweh Savoot, in those days it will come to pass, ten men will take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. How can ten men represent all the nations? And when you read about scripture, you often hear about the 70 nations. But here it says ten men from all the nations, all languages. Guys, there is an example that we have in the scripture. The northern kingdom of Israel, who was scattered into all the world because of idolatry. They were exiled and they assimilated. They came into all the world and, and kind of lost who they are. And this is what it's saying is that all nations, all people, uh, all of these others that were scattered like seeds and implanted in the ground are part of this harvest that are growing up that Yahweh is calling back in. And it says that the, the people from all the nations, every tongue, every tribe, all the people from the nations will come in and grab hold of the skirt of, of, of a Jew saying, we will go with you for we've heard God is with you. Who is this Jew they are grabbing hold of? It's Yeshua that they are grabbing hold of. And they're saying, we have heard God is with you and we will do that. And again, what's the emphasis about holding on to the hem of his garment, that's where his tzitzit would have been, which is a reminder of keeping the commandments of Yahweh. In uh, Numbers 15, when it talks about the, the command of tzitzit, it says that, uh, and you are to look at them, and it is to remind you that you do what I say, that you keep my word. You don't go run off chasing your own eyes and your own things, right? So you keep the word of Yahweh. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, it says, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is the Messiah. The testimony of the body Messiah is that we have love for one another, that we're gathered in together, all gathered in together, and we have love for one another. John 15, 13 and 14 says, greater love is no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And in order to walk in his love, we need to keep his word. That's what Yeshua told us, and that's what John reiterated. 1 John 5, 2 and 3, For this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, 
that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Guys, re- relationship and restoration has always been the heart of Yahweh. Always. Still is. Uh, Jeremiah 32, 37 to 41, again, it says, I will gather them from all the countries where I drove them. This is it. We're gathering in all the people. Give them one heart. Give them one way that will fear him forever, walk with him forever. And, and then uh, he says, make an everlasting covenant. And I will put this, uh, again, everlasting covenant. And I will not turn away from doing good to them. I will put the fear of me in their hearts that they may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing them good. And I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. Yahweh wants to be with you forever. And he made a way for that to happen. All we have to do, as it was simply told, follow me. So that's all we got to do. Learn to follow him. Learn to walk with him, to walk in his ways and uh, be in that path with him. Okay, guys, um, that's all I have for you today. I, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope it's been encouraging. I hope it's been challenging as well. That is the goal that we uh, that we challenge one another to dig in a little a little more into the scripture, not just for knowledge, but to see the heart of the Father in the midst of it all, right? Okay, so if this has been a blessing to you, then please share it in whatever avenue you listen or watch. You know, share these teachings to help get them out there. And if this has been a blessing to you, please consider making a donation to help us continue these teachings to go out there, right? Uh, the, the different things, the equipment, the, the venues, and everything, they all cost something and the time. So um, if, if this has been a blessing to you, please consider making a donation to help us continue to keep these videos out there, okay? So until next time, be blessed and be a blessing. Shalom.